Welcome back to Hardware Unboxed with the first monitor review of 2019, hopefully with many more to come. What we're looking at today is a new beastly monitor from Viotech, the SUW49C, which I assume stands for Super Ultra Wide 49C. This monitor features a 49 inch 3840 by 1080 panel, so it has a 32 9 aspect ratio, hence the term Super Ultra Wide because it's a lot wider than traditional 21 9 monitors. Viotech is pitching this as a gaming monitor, so it packs a 144Hz maximum refresh rate with FreeSync, there's also HDR support, and it's using a curved VA panel, which shouldn't come as a surprise. I actually think a 32.9 monitor would really suck if it wasn't curved, so no complaints from me about the 1800R curvature used here. This thing is so wide that the slight curve just helps to bring the peripheries better into view. Now you might be wondering, why would you even want such a wide monitor? And the answer is simple. It's the equivalent of two 27 inch 1080p monitors side by side, but without the bezel between them. That sort of configuration is quite common to see. So this monitor is essentially combining what used to be a dual screen setup into the one very wide panel. When you think of it as replacing two displays rather than just as a massive, ridiculously wide single panel, it does make a lot more sense. For gamers, you also get the advantage of extra width for better immersion. A while back, a lot of people were getting into multi-monitor gaming setups using things like AMD's iFinity technology, but it never really took off because it didn't work that well. 21.9 monitors came in and basically replaced multi-monitor setups, and now these 32.9 displays are providing even more immersion closer to what multi-monitor setups use to provide, but without the hassle. Of course, not every game supports 32.9 displays, but in those that do, having the extra width adds a lot to the experience. So that's the use case for a 49 inch super ultra wide panel like this. I think what Viatech is providing here does tick both those boxes. On the gaming side, you have a high refresh rate with FreeSync, and on the productivity side, there are features like picture in picture, so you can have two sources hooked up, displaying them side by side like a traditional dual screen setup, but without a bezel in between. There's also an included remote. I'm not sure how many people will be using this sort of display more as a TV than as a monitor though. Of course, Viatech is also known for making highly affordable monitors. This one comes in at 800 US dollars, which again makes it the cheapest in its category. Sure, 800 bucks is still a fair bit of money, but its main competitors are the Samsung C49J890 and C49HG90, both of which are around 1,000 US dollars. We'll take a look at how this monitor performs in a moment, but we've been impressed with Viatech's value propositions in the past. In terms of aesthetics, this monitor is a simple affair. There's no crazy game elements. It's just a nice basic design with reasonably slim bezels. The rear uses a basic matte plastic, while the stand uses a combination of black metal, black plastic, and a shiny silver bar. For such a wide display, the stand is pretty damn sturdy, much more so than some of Viatech's smaller displays, which is a bit of a surprise. The only real bits of flair Viatech added to the design are the red ring around the stand's connection to the rear and an illuminated RGB LED at the top of the stand pillar. The controls for the LED are basic. You can choose to either turn on or off the red, green, or blue elements with no granular control, or you can simply disable it entirely. Highly. As for adjustability, you don't get a whole lot here. There's no tilt or swivel support, understandably, for a monitor of this size. However, there's also no height adjust feature. Like a lot of Viatech's other displays, I feel that the SUW49C sits too low, and to get it sitting higher, you'll need to replace the stand with a third-party VASER mount. Height adjustment on a monitor this size, I'm sure, is a complex task, but what we're left with here is only tilt adjustment support. For inputs, we get a single DisplayPort 1.2 port plus three HDMI ports, one of which is HDMI 2.0 compliant. There's also an audio jack, and the monitor has built-in speakers, which, as you might expect, aren't particularly amazing. Disappointingly, Viatech continues to use basic four-button controls for the on-screen display, although you can control the settings using the included remote, so it's not as big of an issue as with their past monitors. Aside from the picture-in-picture -picture modes I already described, you get a fairly typical range of settings and controls in the OSD here, in line with Viatech's other high-end displays. This is great to see because Viatech's cheaper monitors use a really basic on-screen display with basically zero functionality, but with this display, you're getting a lot more features. 
Let's talk about performance now, and the SUW49C is a little strange in some areas. For example, the monitor does have an overdrive mode, which Firetech claim will deliver a four millisecond response time. However, you cannot use overdrive in conjunction with the maximum 144Hz refresh rate. For some bizarre reason, the setting is disabled and grayed out at 144Hz, but is accessible at 120Hz or lower. This isn't something I've seen before. It's pretty strange to have no overdrive functionality at the maximum refresh rate, but usable overdrive at lower refreshes. For our testing, we always test response times at the panel's maximum refresh rate, because if you're buying a 144Hz monitor, you want to be using it at 144Hz. So without overdrive, the SUW 49C is a bit of a poor performer with an average gray to gray response time of 10.54 milliseconds, putting it among the slowest monitors we've tested in this metric. Some transitions were up above 15 milliseconds, which is standard for a VA panel without overdrive. This makes the SUW49C a poor 144Hz monitor because response times are limiting performance to more like 100Hz in the 144Hz mode. It's also one of those strange situations where response times are better at 120Hz simply because overdrive is available at that refresh rate. I'd be curious to see how this monitor would fair if overdrive worked at 144Hz, but right now I'd suggest most buyers treat this display as a 120Hz panel and use overdrive to get better performance than the 144Hz mode provides. It's a bit disappointing considering this is advertised as a 144Hz panel, but that's the way it's shipping. As for input lag, I've revamped my input lag test for 2019 and I'm currently in the process of retesting a whole suite of monitors I still have access to with fresh and more accurate data. Unfortunately though, that means I don't have any comparison points or graphs for you in this review. However, I can say the SUW49C has very good input lag characteristics with lag around the 6.9 millisecond mark. Brightness exceeded Viatex claims, boasting a maximum of 390 nits, higher than the 320 nits listed in the spec sheet. Contrast ratio is also very strong at over 4,500 to one, again, much higher than the spec sheet lists. However, there is a bit of fall off to contrast when lowering the brightness. At maximum brightness, we're looking at over 4,900 to one, but at a more comfortable 200 nits, we're down to 4663 to one. That sort of fall off isn't ideal, but at least the overall contrast ratio is still very strong. Unfortunately, Viotech has made a common mistake when it comes to color performance. They did not clamp this monitor's gamut to sRGB, and there is no mode in the on-screen display that does so. This panel is capable of wider than sRGB gamuts, boasting 88% DCI-P3 coverage as opposed to 75%, which is typical for an sRGB-only display. And that in itself, you know, it's not a bad thing if you want to harness a wider gamut for some use cases. However, without a mode that limits the display to sRGB, the SUW49C's default behavior is to oversaturate colors. This is because your operating system is providing sRGB image data to the display, which is then stretched to fit the wider gamut of the monitor. An sRGB mode would fix this problem and provide more accurate performance. This issue affects default color performance such as saturation and color checker delta E averages, which are above 3.40 here, indicating mediocre performance. The monitor also ships with an incorrect white balance of around 7200K instead of a proper 6500K, which leads to a blue tint or cold tone. Uh, this leads to mediocre grayscale performance of a 3.60 delta E average with weak gamma. While the unclamped gamut cannot be fixed with the on-screen display, you can at least fix the white balance. With a few tweaks, I was able to improve performance. However, delta E averages remain above 2.0 across our grayscale, saturation, and color checker tests, which is a pretty average result. Ideally, we'd want those values under 2.0, or in the best case, under 1.0, but that's not possible without a full calibration. Performing a full calibration using SpectraCal's CalMAN 5 fixes the gamut issue and also addresses the rest of the issues with the panel. As you'd expect, we're then left with Delta E averages under 1.0 across the board, a correct gamma curve and proper white balance. However, because these fixes were achieved with a software profile, only applications that actually support color management, like Photoshop for example, will apply the fixes. Unmanaged apps, including the Windows desktop environment, basically ignore this profile, which is why we prefer monitors that can be corrected using on-screen controls. If you're interested in our profile we created for the SUW49C, we have links to download that through our Patreon page in the description below. Final aspect of performance is uniformity, and this is perhaps the worst aspect to the SUW49C. It's hard to get a backlight of this size with a curve 
to produce a uniform output, and Viatech has struggled here. The outer edges are significantly different from the center with my review unit to the tune of Delta E's above 8.0, and it's reasonably obvious when viewing solid colors or shades. Oh wait, there is actually one more thing. I nearly forgot about HDR performance given Viatech advertises this as an HDR capable monitor. I think maybe Viatech forgot about this as well because simply put, this is not an HDR display. The HDR experience here is actually worse than standard SDR because the panel cannot get the brightness output even in the right ballpark. So I just forget about the panel supporting HDR and make your buying decision purely on its SDR performance. All up, the Viotech SUW49C is going to give you a typical Viotech experience. It's the same panel and specifications as bigger manufacturers like Samsung, with a few hundred dollars shaved off the price. You do sacrifice some performance, but the experience is largely the same, which is why it's a great option for those that want good bang for buck. My main areas of concern are the lack of overdrive when running at 144Hz, which makes the SUW49C effectively a 120Hz display, along with the unclamped color gamut and port uniformity. The uniformity issue can't be fixed, the color gamut problem is mitigated to an extent with calibration, and most VA panels can't truly deliver a 144Hz experience anyway due to slow response times. In fact, I suspect a lot of people will get caught up on the response times of the SUW49C, but with around 8 millisecond responses at 120Hz, that's in line with most other VA panels I've tested. Occasionally you can get the rare unit that does actually do 144Hz, but when you understand that response times are an issue for all VA panels, it's really not as bad as it first sounds. Aside from those issues, the SUW49C performs well. It has an excellent contrast ratio, great input lag. It supports FreeSync with low frame rate compensation. The design is nice and it has neat features like side-by-side -side picture in picture, which makes the panel also decent for productivity. Due to its size and aspect ratio, it's more of a niche product, but for those after a 30 to nine panel, you're gonna get an experience pretty close to Samsung's competing display for about $200 less, which is what we like to see. The only reason I'd opt for something like the Samsung C49 HD90 at this point would be to get its superior HDR performance, but even then the Samsung CHG series doesn't deliver amazing HDR anyway. For all other buyers, and especially those with calibration tools, or those that don't really care all that much about color accuracy or oversaturation, I'd go for the $800 Viotech SUW49C instead. And that's it for this monitor review. We'll have more of these reviews coming up throughout 2019, so stay tuned to Hardware Unboxed as we continue to expand our monitor testing. Consider supporting us on Patreon to get access to our exclusive Discord chat and monthly live streams, and I'll catch you in the next one.